Welcome to the Snubby Awards. I'm your host, Ryan Stacy, and today we're going to be looking at the 2016 Academy Awards. For those of you who are new to the Snubbies, uh, this is the show where we look at all of the Best Picture nominees for a given year and decide if the Academy got it right or if someone got snubbed. If I decide there was a Best Picture nominee who got snubbed and deserved to win the uh, Best Picture Award and didn't, they win the coveted Snubby Award. If I decide the Academy got it right and the movie that won deserve to win, no one gets a snubby, and we move on. So this week, like I said, we'll be looking at the 2016 awards. The movie that won Best Picture this year was Spotlight. So did Spotlight deserve the award, or did somebody get snubbed? We have eight movies to look at, and unlike last time, all of these movies are at least really good. Uh, you know, last time we had some a stinker, <coughs> Arrival. <coughs> this time we have really solid movies, and it's, it's going to be tough to pick a winner. So let's get started. Eighth place... Bridge of Spies. Now, if your worst movie that was nominated for Best Picture is a Spielberg movie, I'd say you have a pretty good year on your hands. Bridge of Spies follows Tom Hanks' character, who is a lawyer, defending a man who has been accused of being a Russian spy. And the first half of the movie is kind of a, a legal thriller, him defending the spy, and the ramifications this has on his family and, you know, about the case. It's all really interesting stuff. I know this is the superior half of the movie. The acting is phenomenal. It's just a really solid legal thriller. Then we get into the second half where Tom Hanks actually goes to uh, Germany and negotiates uh, a prisoner exchange on a bridge of spies. You know, and it's supposed to be really intense, like, oh man, what could happen? His life is in danger, yada yada. He's got to get this prisoner exchange, but it's really not that great here. Like, I, I never felt like Tom Hanks was actually in danger. It, it was a pretty simple affair. So I, I love the first half of this movie, but the second half was kind of disappointing. It was still really good, and Tom Hanks is great. It is definitely the weakest film from this field. 8 out of 10. Seventh place, Brooklyn. Uh, I was surprised with Brooklyn, um, because I'm not really into love story movies, but this one might be one of the best I've ever seen. Plus, it's a really relatable movie, which I'll explain in a second. Brooklyn follows the story of a young girl from Ireland who's moving to America for the first time. So she's leaving home for the first time, leaving her family behind and trying to adapt to, you know, New York City, Brooklyn. Um, and then eventually, later in the movie, she goes back home to visit. And she's kind of got to deal with, do I want to go back to New York? Do I want to stay in Ireland? What do I do? And as someone who moved halfway across the country, I can kind of relate to that. You know, it's not quite as extreme as Ireland and New York, but I can relate and I could understand her perspective. And it was really interesting to watch. Um, also, you get really invested in her character because the movie's so damn funny. Like, she was cracking me up. It's over the other characters in the movie, but, you know, it's not just a melodramatic romance. It's funny. It's really funny, and the characters are interesting, and she's relatable, which is not always the case in love story movies. So I gotta say, I was impressed with Brooklyn. 9 out of 10. Sixth place, The Big Short, uh, which kills me to put it this low, but that just tells you how strong of a year it was. The Big Short is phenomenal and I think it's better than it has any right to be. But The Big Short is about the uh, 2008 uh, housing crisis that happened and it's about uh, three different groups of people who kind of realized this is gonna happen. We can capitalize on this and make a lot of money on the failure of the housing market. Yeah. Um, but it's really fascinating because some of these characters, especially uh, the main character, Steve Carell's character, is just absolutely disgusted by this. He does it anyway, but he's outraged at the, the shittiness of some of these people. Um, and it's really fascinating to watch. And they do a good job of explaining all the different jargon uh, they use to discuss the housing market and all this stuff and all the Wall Street terms that an ordinary person might not know. Um, and they do a really good job of explaining it. And it's damn funny. But it's, it's great. It's investing. You're really rooting for these characters. At the same time, you're just disgusted by this whole mess. And it's just fascinating to watch. And the director does a phenomenal job and better than I, anyone could have expected, I think. As much as I love Talladega Nights, you know, I wouldn't have expected that guy to get nominated for Best Picture and Best Director. But a really solid movie, and a lot of fun, and really depressing. 9 out of 10. Fifth place, The Martian. Uh, the Martian is so much better than I expected. It's such a simple story. It's literally Matt Damon gets trapped on Mars and has to figure out how to survive until he can be rescued and how NASA is going to rescue him. And that's it. 
It's just one problem after another, and I love that type of movie. Uh, it's really fascinating to watch. Matt Damon does a great job, and seeing how he figures out how to solve all these different problems is just awesome, and it's really, really intense at the end. I had no idea what was going to happen. I didn't know how it could end, and I was just on the edge of my seat freaking out, like, oh my god, what's going to happen? Uh, and Matt Damon is, is fantastic. It's a simple, simple movie, but it does a great job. Phenomenal job. 9 out of 10. These top four, these are all 10 out of 10s, okay? These are phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal movies. See them all. So the fact that I have to pick a best one out of these four, oh, God, kills me. Fourth place, The Revenant. Leo, Leo wins an Oscar. I don't think he deserved for this movie, but that does not what we're talking about today. Anyway, The Revenant's a story of a group of uh, hunters, like fur traders. It's a group that's been sent out to collect furs. Leonardo DiCaprio plays their guide to scout because he knows the land really well. And on their journey back, he gets attacked by a bear and just, just wrecked. So Tom Hardy leaves him for dead and kills his son. Um, so the movie's about Leonardo DiCaprio just trying to survive. He's just completely wrecked beyond a belief. He should really be dead. And the crazy part is this is a true story for the most part. So it's about him trying to survive and the elements and all the different dangers and try and make his way back to get revenge on Tom Hardy. That's it. Another simple movie, but the cinematography is so beautiful. This is one of the most beautiful movies I've ever seen. And that alone like propels it so high. But it's also like a really engaging story. Like you were rooting for Leo to get back and you, and Tom Hardy, you may hate his guts, but he's a good villain. Like all of his motivation makes complete sense. It's, it's just a really solid movie and it's some of the most beautiful cinematography I've ever seen in a movie. You need to check it out. It's a really long movie, but damn, is it good. So gotta check out The Revenant, 10 out of 10. Number three, Room. Room is pure nightmare fuel for someone like me who doesn't like kids. I cannot imagine being trapped inside a garden shed with one for five plus years. That would drive me insane. Room is about uh, Brie Larson's character who at the age of 17 was kidnapped by a man and has been locked in his garden shed for seven years. She has a kid fathered by him um, and they've both been locked in there for years. Now the, the, the movie comes from the kid's perspective. So he doesn't know anything about the outside world. He barely knows it exists. He narrates a lot of the movie, kind of gives his perspective, which is how the book this is based on is written, um, which is just fascinating and disturbing because you can see Brie Larson's character is just traumatized, but he doesn't really get that. You know, he's explaining things in like an innocent manner. Um, it's just, just super messed up, super messed up. And the second half of the movie is kind of about Brie Larson and her son trying to return to the outside world and try and cope with that and try and adjust to life outside. You know, Brie Larson readjusting this kid, seeing all this stuff and meeting other people for the first time. And it's really, really messed up, but it's really fascinating. You're just engrossed and disgusted. Oh man, it's, it's a rough movie, but also a great movie and nightmare inducing film. Watch Room, watch it, 10 out of 10. All right, so now we got two left. We have our best picture, Spotlight, and we have Mad Max Fury Road, which I consider probably to be the best action film of all time. Did Spotlight deserve it, or did Mad Max deserve it and get snubbed? We will find out. Let's talk about both of them. So Mad Max Fury Road is a really simple movie. It's the fourth movie in the Mad Max series, which is about Tom Hardy's character, again, uh, Max, who is in a post-apocalyptic world. He's an ex-cop, which doesn't really matter, but his family was killed like back in the first movie. So he's just been surviving out here and he's got a little nuts, but he ends up getting captured by this post-apocalyptic gang. And then Charlize Theron's character helps free the, the leader of this gang, sex slaves, and they take off running across the desert and Tom Hardy, Max, gets involved with them. And basically it's a group of characters who are just running for it and you got just a bajillion bad guys after them. And it's one long chase movie. That's pretty much it. It's just a chase. It's just action scene after action scene of these guys, people trying to get away. And these bad guys just, they won't stop coming. And it's fucking awesome. Like, this is so, you know, if you told me Mad Max Fury Road was going to be better than The Road Warrior right before it came out, I wouldn't have believed you. Because Mad Max 2 is one of the best action movies of all time. And somehow, 4 is better. The hell. It's crazy. Uh, it's, if you haven't seen this movie, I don't know what you're doing. You don't really need to watch the first three, though I do recommend it. Uh, I like them, especially two. But you don't need to. It, you, you'll get it. Um, they don't, they barely matter. In fact, two and three technically don't matter at all. You, you don't need to watch two and three, but you should. 
But seriously, these action scenes are just over the top awesome, yet they do a good job of developing the characters. And there's not a ton of dialogue, especially for Max, but you get it. Like, the acting is that good. It, it, it's, the direction's amazing, the stunts are insane, the visual effects are just nuts. I can't believe no one died making this movie. This, is ins this movie is just the most insane thing ever. And if you haven't watched it, you're wrong, go watch it right now. 10 out of 10. Finally, Spotlight. No, Spotlight's a much safer movie, sort of. Like, they, they're not as quite as ambitious. They take a very simple story um, about this a news team from Boston who are the ones who uncovered the, the cover-ups and the big abuse scandals in the Catholic Church. And that's it. It's just them, you know, it's just a bunch of reporters trying to, un, you know, bring this out to the open. And that's it. But the acting and the writing and the direction is just so incredible that this movie will wreck you if you let it. <laughs> Mark Ruffalo gives a speech during this movie where he's just pissed off and it's one of the, it got to me, it got to me, like this movie gets me, I've seen it a few times now and it just wrecks me every time, I'm bawling, okay not quite bawling, but I'm, I'm tearing up every time I watch it. And if you come from a, a religious background at all, especially if you're Catholic or, or a former Catholic, uh, this movie will wreck you, <laughs> I promise. It's, it's, it's tough, it's a tough sit, but the acting is so good and the writing is just on point. And it gets to you so 10 out of 10, I, I, I gotta say. So here's my dilemma. I have this really ambitious action movie and this really well thought out drama about some news reporters. And it's so hard to decide which one of these is best pictures. And did anybody get snubbed? So it's a really, really tough call, but I have to make a decision. And as hard as it is, I will not be giving out a snubby this week. I do think the Academy got it right. Spotlight deserved to win Best Picture. It's such a, an interesting and disturbing story that is well told. It may be a simpler, uh, less ambitious piece of Mad Max, but it executed it perfectly um, in every way, shape, and form. The acting from Michael Keaton and Mark Ruffalo and pretty much everybody is just fantastic. It's a subtler story, but it's great. And it's so fascinating. I, I, I can't get tired of watching it. And it's just emotionally wrecking with fantastic writing and fantastic direction. It really, this is when you need to check out. It'll, it'll hurt to watch a little bit, but it's just so interesting and so fascinating and so haunting that yeah, it, it, it leaves an impression. And I think it definitely deserved to win the Best Picture, even though this was an extremely, extremely strong field of movies, especially Mad Max Fury Road. But Spotlight wins it. Next time, I'm going to be looking at the 2015 Oscars and trying to figure out if anyone got snubbed. I'm Ryan Stacy. This has been the Snubby Awards.